are two universes going on right now. It's like there are smaller political factions, but then there are two big factions that split what we call the right and the left. And for, you know, I've talked about this before, that I don't think the right and the left really means your stance on policy anymore, but your stance on social issues. You know, the right and the left, it used to mean whether you are for immigration or you are for universal health care, things like that. But that really doesn't work anymore. I mean, take, for instance, Mike Cernovich. He's tweeted out uh, in favor of universal health care, but he's considered alt-right or new right by the people on the left. So then what is this divide? For a while, I thought that it was social issues, but now I don't think even that's true. I'm starting to think it's, it's really now just based on your perception of the world and your understanding of current events, which is why I'm not surprised that people like Dave Rubin and myself and other classic liberals are called Nazis or Nazi sympathizers. I want to talk specifically about the Portland murderer. When I heard that a white nationalist, a white supremacist, Trump supporter, had killed two people in Portland, I, I was thinking, whoa. I, I, gotta, I gotta look into this. And sure enough, there are the photos. American flag over his back, marching through the park, doing the Roman salute, the Nazi salute, as many people know it. And I'm like, oh man, there it is, it's pretty damning. Looks like this guy was going to these rallies, and then what happened was, apparently, he was harassing some Muslim women, and two guys intervened, he, three guys I believe it was, stabbed them, killing two, one guy is expected, expected to survive. And I'm like, my first thought was, you know what, man? There are crazy people all over, and the responsible action would be for anybody who's aligned with this guy's beliefs, call it out. Just call it the violence. Say, you know what? We don't care who you are or, or what you believe, but violence is not okay. And I started seeing a, a lot of people post about how, no, you know, this guy's not one of us. He has nothing to do with Trump. He's not a white nationalist not a, not a, or any, any of these things. And it's like a, a false flag. And so being a journalist, instead of outright being like a, no, this guy's a white supremacist Trump supporter, own up to it, I said, okay, well, well, let me look into it. Some people had tweeted some Facebook posts this guy had done. This guy's name is Jeremy Christian. And sure enough, the dude is not a Trump supporter. He's actually posted that he wants to kill Trump voters and Hillary voters. So apparently he goes around ranting that he's a nihilist. He's got pro-Bernie Sanders, pro-Jill Stein posts, anti-racist posts, pro-Neil deGrasse Tyson posts, pro-science posts. He's talked about how he wants to kill all monotheists. So it seems, based on his Facebook account, and what happened, that he wasn't harassing the Muslim women out of, a, out of racism. It wasn't an attack on Arabic people, or I don't even, I'm not, I don't even know what the race of those women were. Which, uh, and, it, and it wasn't specifically that he didn't like Islam. It was that not only does he not like Islam, he doesn't like Christians either. He doesn't like Jewish people either. He is flat out posted that he, he wants to kill monotheists. So he really just hates religion in general. And he's pro-science, anti-racist. The long story short, we're, you know, BuzzFeed actually didn't do too bad of a job reporting on this. They show that he posted about supporting Bernie Sanders, but they did a few things that to me felt disingenuous. They said that while he originally supported Bernie Sanders, he now supports Trump. But nowhere on his Facebook page do you see that he supported Trump. If, if anything, you could say his stance was kind of like a Bernie or bust, that if Bernie Sanders wasn't going to be president, then Trump's gonna burn everything down. But he, he actually posted that he abstained from voting for Trump. The dude, was flat out weird. And he doesn't fit either of these two universes. But there is a post circulating where he claims that he's going to a free speech rally, this is at the end of April, to false flag the Trump supporters. Now I can't confirm that this post is real. I have gone to his Facebook page, I have looked at many of his posts, and I have confirmed the existence of a lot of these things about him being a Bernie supporter and all that. But there is one post circulating where he claims that he's doing a psychological operation. That by going to the free speech rally dressed with the, you know, with the American flag, pretending to be a Trump supporter, he wanted to call out the fake free speechers. 
He has several posts where he says he will demask anyone, Antifa or free speecher. He doesn't care. And it seems like his goal was to highlight the hypocrisy of the free speech movement. Because sure enough, a video was posted on April 29th showing the free speech rally attendees, many Trump supporters, asking the police to remove him because he was, he was saying racial slurs and giving the Nazis salute. Flat out, the Trump supporters and the free speech movement said, get this guy out of here. They reported him to the police. And there's actually a clip where you can see many of the Trump supporters standing next to Antifa as they're saying, get rid of this guy. Now this guy was posting about how that's, that's showing the hypocrisy of the free speech movement, that if they truly be believe in free speech, he should be allowed to say racial slurs and give the Nazi salute, and that was his, his intent. But what, what bothers me is that BuzzFeed, along with many other news outlets, show the picture of him with the American flag giving the Nazi salute, and they say he's a Trump supporter. But that's not the case. So when I say that there's two universes, it seems like there's a universe of people who are willing to look into this, be, be a bit more skeptical. And a lot of people in the new right, a lot of classical liberals will fall into this category. I'm not going to read BuzzFeed and say, there it is. No, I, I went to the guy's Facebook page and started reading his posts and reading his comments to see what he is actually on about. And I think it's this innate skepticism and curiosity that makes me want to do journalism. The other universe tends to be more accepting of whatever the media is putting out without thought. I looked into this guy's Facebook profile and I made a Facebook post about it, that he's far from a white nationalist, he's, he's far from our preconceived notions of a Trump supporter or a racist, and did include an edit uh, a few minutes later because this guy, Jeremy Christian, did say it would be hard to argue against him being a white nationalist because he believes in the balkanization of the U.S., right? Something about creating segregated ethno pockets throughout the U.S., literally segregating races. But while my intent was to have a legitimate discussion about who this guy is and what he believes, a lot of people in what I would call the other universe simply said that I was supporting an alt-right conspiracy narrative. And instead of actually looking into this guy, they immediately just go for the, if you disagree, if you don't call this guy a white, a white supremacist, Trump supporter, then you are a lying alt-right Nazi sympathizer. So I guess the point of this video is kind of an elaboration on what I was saying yesterday. I wanted to more directly address the, I guess, conspiracy that a Trump supporter white nationalist was doing, was committed these murders and just say straight up, this guy doesn't fit any of the preconceived political factions. You can't really call him a Trump supporter or a white nationalist. You can't really call him a Bernie supporter or a, a, a left-leaning activist. It's not fair. You know, and I've seen people on the right say that he was left, he was a Bernie supporter. And while that's true, he was a Bernie supporter, I think if you look at his Facebook page, you can see that he's all over the board and his political views don't fit the spectrum. While he did vote for Bernie, he also reads Breitbart and other weird occult websites. The dude is just a weird guy. So the last thing I wanna say is that even though I'm trying to take a rational, fact-based, journalistic approach to understanding who this guy is and what happened in Portland, I know that this message won't be that effective. Why? Because people on the left People who believe the narrative that he was a white nationalist Trump supporter are not going to watch this video for the most part. They're, they're much less likely to. They're not going to Google search things like the truth about the Portland murders. They're not gonna do it. They're gonna read Buzzfeed, Vox, Mashable, whatever, and they're gonna say, that's the truth and I know it to be true. It's not just the left that does that. People on the right do it, and I've talked about that a million times, but unfortunately, the people who need to hear this typically aren't the ones who are going to look for it. And that's the two universes. Will someone Google search and investigate, or will they just trust the mainstream media? What do you think? <laughs> Comment below and let me know what you think, because as always, comments are greatly appreciated. And now, I'll say this, I, I don't usually say this, but when you comment, when you give a thumbs up, when you like the video, when you in any way interact or share, you're telling YouTube that my channel is good, and then YouTube 
will show my channel to more people. And that's why channels that are bigger grow faster. It's like a snowball rolling down a hill. So anything you can do to just simply interact with the channel really does help out. But commenting is part of the solution. It really is, having a discussion. And I know a lot of people post really dumb comments, but hey, let's at least try to have a conversation. So thank you all so much for hanging out and watching. I'm trying a new time, 4 p.m. We'll see how it goes. But uh, stay tuned, new videos every single day, and I will see you all tomorrow.